Oh, hi there. I'm just sporting my newest favorite garden thing. This is called garden mesh, my friends, and it is the answer to so many of your problems in the kitchen garden. My journey using garden mesh started years ago. I was watching a YouTube trying to get answers to my garden problems. And this lady had two garden beds of lettuce. One was uncovered and the other one, she said, come look at this one under the tool. And I was like, tool as in like T-O-O-L? And she was like, no, no, T-U-L-L-E. I think that's the way it's spelled. So literally she had taken bridal tool and put it over these greens that she was growing. And the difference in the two beds was outstanding. So the bed that was uncovered, the leaves had all kinds of holes in them and damage from pests. And the one where she pulled back the tool, it was like, oh my gosh, it was fantastic. So, um, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna use tool too. I like this idea. So my first few years of gardening, I actually went to the fabric store and bought tool, like bridal tool from the store. The only downside to using that material, it does work, but it was just a little too fragile. So if I put like a landscape pin in it or it caught on a piece of wire or something, the material would rip pretty easily. Lo and behold, the garden industry has an entire product line dedicated to this very thing. Um, the gardeners have created their own kind of tool, my friends, and it is much stronger than bridal tool. So introducing garden mesh fabric. Dun, da, da, da. So this is garden mesh, um, and I've gotten them from a few different brands. I'll put links down in the comments to where you can find them online. This one I actually purchased from a local garden center here. I'll show you what the, um, the packaging looks like. So this is from a company called Hacks Nix, H-A-X-N-I-C-K-S. I think it's like a family run gardening business. This one is 12 by 12, but you can see they call it micro mesh. That is trademarked by the way. So you will not find anybody else. So I don't even know if I can say micro mesh. I'm just gonna call it garden mesh. But listen to this description, the ultimate insect pest and weather protection for vegetables and fruit without using chemicals, reusable, long lasting UV stabilized 0.6 millimeter mesh protects against carrot fly, butterflies, leaf miners, pea moth, cutworm, aphids, onion fly, flea beetle, caterpillars, vine weevil, birds, slugs, and animals. I mean, could you ask for anything more in a garden product? I don't think so. Um, this is not sponsored by the way. I just bought it and I thought I would tell you about it. So, um, so the, how do I use this? Well, when I first started using garden mesh, I wasn't fancy or anything and I didn't have these little hoops. So I would literally just take it and put it over the bed like this, like just drape it on. I would find sometimes that the squirrels would still find a way to come up inside the bed. So then I started um, like latching it using, you know, landscaping pins and making sure it was secured along the sides of the garden. Um, you can do that too. So you don't even have to have these hoops. You can literally just lay it across the bed if you're getting pest pressure, if you have squirrels digging into your bed, rabbits, what else. You can just cover it and you'll be good to go as long as you make sure the sides are secured. Um, the only downside to just laying it like that is you can end up smushing your plants or if it gets rained on too heavily or if the pest like literally jumps onto this mesh, you can end up smushing your plants. They're like not as, um, what's the word? They're gonna be less likely to jump on the mesh if it looks more like this, you know, more like a tent. So, um, but easiest point of entry is literally guys, just buy some tool or some mesh if you want it stronger and lay it over the bed. Next step, your next level would be to add hoops first. So these are just garden hoops. These will support any kind of cover. So frost cloth, shade cloth, um, poly when it's really cold, whatever kind of cover you wanna put on your garden. These are a fantastic, just simple support for them. So these can be extended to be taller. These can go up to like two feet. I've used them on pepper plants or eggplants that get to two feet tall where I'm having like a beetle problem or something like that on those. But for this season, I'm in cool season right now. So I've mostly got cabbages, kales, lettuces, things that aren't gonna get, at least right now, higher than a foot to two feet tall. So you put in these, these go into either side, basically to span the whole width of the bed. You wouldn't want them to be smaller. So if you have, like you can imagine, this is a two and a half foot wide bed. So in a four foot wide bed, 
this um, hoop is going to be much lower. So once you do that, you're going to take your mesh and just put it over. So in general, um, you can keep this on all the time. That's the fantastic thing about this is it lets sun in, it lets air in, but it and it lets water in, but it doesn't let all the bad guys in. So you stretch it across. As you can see, this one is way too big for my bed. So this is a 12 by 12 piece, and I am like gonna totally cover my bed and then some. I could cover two beds my size with this one piece. So I can cut it in half, but I may wanna keep this length because if you can imagine the, um, the plants being this tall, then I might want the length, you know, the width to be this big. But it does have this sewing line right down the center, so I could just cut this in half if I wanted to. All right, so once I put it on, the thing you wanna make sure is that it's secure. So you can use something like landscape pins, I've even used um, like plant labels uh, that have like a metal edge, but something just simple like this, and you're just gonna come along the side and simply kind of push through the mesh and push down into the bed. So that way I know it's not gonna fly away or it shouldn't, um, it'll stay. So you could have all the way up really to the edge here. You know, if I didn't have so much fabric, I could have all the way to the edge here and then do landscape fabric along the, I mean, landscape pins like that, all along the edge to keep it. So you can keep these on all the time. There's really no reason to take them off until you're ready to harvest or prune or something like that. The great thing is this is gonna keep moths off your uh, garden from starting the, the problems, right? With like caterpillars, all those, you know, you heard the whole list of all the pests that this keeps off. So you can literally just keep this on, rain, shine, whatever, pull it off when you're harvesting and you're gonna end up with greens that have so much less pest pressure on them and um, so many more greens for yourself. Now I've used this even for something a little bit more daunting, which is rabbits. So in this area, we have a lot of rabbits and they do this weird thing in my garden where what they actually like to do is lay their babies in my beds. <laughs> so I think what they've done is they've realized this is kind of like a secure place where they can be, um, their babies can be free from like dogs or coyotes or something like that. So they hop up in the bed, they dig down, make a little den, and then they lay their babies. They don't tend to eat from the garden, but I just don't love having rabbit babies in my garden. You know what I'm saying? So um, actually just in this bed the other day, I came out and I could tell that a rabbit was starting to dig to make the nest. So now I don't cover it in the, I haven't been covering it during the day because um, it hasn't been very sunny, but I've been putting on the covers at night through the morning because that's generally when the rabbits are out, right? Like they're, they're kind of out in dusk and dawn. So I cover the bed with the mesh and um, latch it on all sides. And I found that that really deters the rabbits from jumping up and nesting. So it doesn't work all the time. I've ended up probably, these beds have birthed about eight rabbits so far. <laughs> so it doesn't work all the time and it only works if you put it on there and you latch it. So we had a super windy day yesterday and these things were across in my neighbor's yard. So you have to make sure you latch it down with landscape pens, but that's about all you have to do. So if you have a ton of pest pressure, if you're getting lots of caterpillars, you have holes in your greens, if you have um, rabbits or squirrels or any other kind of mammal pressure on your garden, this is a great first step. It's not that expensive to add to your garden. You don't have to build this huge garden house or fencing or all those things. It's just one little barrier. And I found, I'll tell you over the years, all these other kind of tales of ways to prevent pests. I've tried them all, like the cayenne pepper and the forks in the dirt and the shiny CDs and all that kind of stuff. And for me, nothing's worked better than a physical barrier. So physical barrier is what you need. And uh, take the lesson from me. And I wish I knew that lady's name. I could remember where that YouTube was. I would thank her so much for introducing me to the idea of tool in the garden because it's led me to this and so much more success with my greens. So check it out, try it out. And if you have questions about garden mesh, put them in the comments below. 
Speaking of growing greens, which is something I love to do, if you would like to grow more, I have so many resources on growing your own salad garden. It's one of the best ways to get a ton of production out of your space, and it's so delicious. So there are resources down below that you can check out to learn more about salad gardening. Um, and of course, included in that is all about protecting your greens too. There's a whole course I've created called the Salad Garden School, and uh, it shows you start to finish how to set up a raised bed kitchen garden that grows nothing but greens. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you and your tool or your garden mesh next time. Thanks for watching, bye.